Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and in this video, I want to show you a couple quick techniques you can use to decorate your Go errors to include extra metadata or information that can make some of your code a lot simpler to use. Imagine you've written a retry loop that calls a callback function repeatedly until it succeeds. Now, further imagine that this callback may return an error that should be considered a permanent error and abort the operation immediately rather than retrying. How would you write this functionality? Here you can see my partial implementation of this code. I have a function called retry that takes two arguments. The first is the maximum number of retries, and the second is the callback function that just returns an error. This retry function in turn returns an error itself, which might be the last error returned from the callback, or it could be uh, the error max retries uh, reached. Now, if we look at the body of the code, we see a expected for loop that attempts max retries a number of times. And each iteration through the loop, it calls the do function, the, the callback. And if it gets no error, then it returns. Now here's the part where it's incomplete. If I do get an error, I just continue and retry. So there's no option here to short circuit in case of some sort of fatal error. Think about it, how would you solve this problem? Perhaps one obvious way to solve this would be to have your callback function return two arguments. It could return the error and then a Boolean, for example, to indicate whether or not it should continue or not. Let's see what that would look like. Here I've modified my function to take a callback with two arguments, a Boolean and the error. If the error is nil, then I just return immediately. Otherwise, I know that the error is not nil. Then I check the cont or the continuation variable, the Boolean. And if it is false, then I return the error immediately. If it is true, then I continue and try again. That's not bad, it works, but I think we can do better. And this is where I want to introduce to you the concept of an error decorator. Let me show you what I mean. So error types in Go are interfaces, which means that we can make our own implementations of them if we want to. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make my own implementation that decorates an existing error with some metadata. Now, in this case, it's gonna be the simplest possible error implementation I can imagine. Uh, let me show you what it looks like and then I'll walk you through it. There we have it. That's it. I've created a type called fatal. Uh, it's a struct and it has a single embedded element in it called error, the error interface. I've also added one function. This isn't ne strictly necessary, but it's really good practice. And that is the unwrap method on this type. And that is so that tools like errors.as and errors.is can properly unwrap the error. And it's really simple. Uh, it just returns that embedded error type. Now, because the error interface is embedded in this struct, that means that any methods defined on that interface are also available to the struct. Of course, the error interface only has a single method, and that is the error method that returns the error string. So that method is now available to my new fatal type. So if somebody calls the error method on an instance of my fatal type, it will get the string that is embedded in that uh, whatever error is contained within that function within that struct. Now, why would we want this? Well, the nice thing about this is this allows our callback function to decorate an error in a way that we can detect if it's a fatal error. Then based on that, we can behave appropriately without having to create that extra flag that our callback calls. So let me show you what this what the function looks like now after I've made this change. So my retry function now takes a callback with only a single return value, the error. However, the loop now checks whether that error is of the type of fatal using the errors.as function right here. If it does match that type, then it returns immediately. If it doesn't, then it continues. So let me now create the callback that this function might use to demonstrate what this might do.
So what I've done is just create a very simple test called test retry that creates a callback that always returns an error. And then I call the retry loop on it. Let's see what happens when I execute that test. Max retries reached is returned. So we can usually walk through the code and see how that works. Uh, we call retry with the value of, of five and the callback that returns an error. So we're gonna loop through that five times. We get through the fifth iteration, we fail and we return this. So that works as expected. How can we modify this now to offer a fatal error? So we don't do the five retries. What we do So all we have to do to trigger that new behavior is we have to wrap an existing error value, in this case it's one created just by calling errors.new, in the new fatal decorator type I created. Now if I run the test, let's see what happens. Now we get fatal error, which is this text here, rather than the max retries reached. So we know that we're not looping through all of our uh, five retries in this case. This can be really useful if you're doing something like, say, fetching a URL, and you want to immediately fail if the URL itself is invalid. Let me show you what that would look like. So here I'm creating an HTTP request with an obviously invalid URL. It doesn't have enough slashes in it. Uh, however, it doesn't actually fail here. So this fatal isn't actually doing anything, uh, which we'll see in a moment. And then we try to actually fetch that URL. We don't do anything with response. We just see if we get a uh, an error or not. Let me run it. So we get to max retries reach. So we know that this is the error that's being returned and not this one. So we actually need to inspect this error in some way to see what's going on. What I'm doing now is I check the error returned by the do method on the HTTP client. And if it's a URL error, which could be anything from a DNS failure, to a uh, invalid URL, as we have here, then I convert that to a fatal error and return that. Now, you might actually want to be a little bit more careful than this. Uh, some URL errors may not be permanent errors, such as a DNS failure. So you might want to be a little bit more careful. Let me show what that would look like. This is probably a little bit more robust code, because now a temporary DNS failure would still allow a retry, for example but an invalid typed URL, as my example, uh, will not. So there you have it. That's really all I wanted to demonstrate in this short video, how you can use a very, very simple struct with an embedded error in it to create an error decorator that can indicate, for in this case, a fatal error. You can also use that for warnings or anything else that you want to just indicate that this error is of a certain type or has a certain characteristic. If you're interested in more about embedding errors, I have other videos on the topic. I'll have a link up here you can look at uh, or some comments in the description. If you learned something today, be sure to hit that like button. I hope you'll also subscribe to get notification of other videos like this in the future. Until next time, boldly go.